CATV is proudly presented by Toyota. The Australian Cricket Hall of Fame was launched in 1996 to recognise the greats of Australian cricket. To be inducted, players must have been retired for at least five years and had a significant impact on how the game is played. Tonight, we add two more to this exclusive group. Yes, the proud history of Australian cricket is reflected in the Australian Hall of Fame. Now, to introduce tonight's first inductee, please welcome a member of the Hall of Fame himself and a former captain of Australia, Mark Taylor. <laughs> Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you, Mark. Um, I'm delighted to be standing here tonight, actually, um, to induct Mark Waugh into the Hall of Fame. Uh, Mark and I have been mates uh, for 35 years, um, and we actually debuted together uh, way back in October of 1985 for New South Wales against Tasmania at the old TCA ground in Hobart. And it was almost our first and last games for New South Wales because uh, the third day of that game was my 21st birthday. And as everyone should do, you've got to celebrate your 21st birthday. And Mark, myself and his brother, Stephen, went out and we may have had one or two too many. The next morning, Mark and I, who were, we were rooming together, I don't know why they put two debutants together, um, we slept in. And I got a phone call from then, of the then coach of New South Wales cricket, Bob Simpson, uh, saying, Mark, you better get you and your roommate down to the ground. We we're starting warm-ups. Now, I thought I'd only been in bed for a few hours, so I told Simo to, well, I'll say shoot through, but it was a bit more colourful than that. Um, Simo said to me, you better check your watch. Um, after telling him to shoot through a few more times, I did check my watch, and it was 10 past nine, and we'd missed the bus. Uh, and Mark and I hurriedly raced down to the ground and got one of Bob Simpson's classic uh, fielding drills, which went for about an hour if you're late to the, to the team bus. And it's probably why we stood together at first and second slip for many years playing for Australia because we got the Simo workout. Uh, the good news is that Simo forgave us and he picked us in the, in the Australian cricket teams in, in years to come. Since then, I've played with Mark uh, and many uh, a game for New South Wales and Australia. Um, I've played against him uh, when he played for Bankstown for a number of years and I've watched him from the commentary box in the latter half or the latter part of his career. His stats, well, they're superb, really, in all forms of the game. 128 test matches for Australia, 8,029 runs at 42, 20 hundreds in test match cricket, 59 wickets and 181 catches in those 128 tests. In one day games, 244 one days, 8,500 runs exactly at an average of 39, 18 one day hundreds, so 38 hundreds in total for Australia. In, his, in both forms of the game. Over 26,000 first-class runs for Australia, New South Wales, Essex, and probably a few other sides which I've forgotten about over his long career. Of those 38 hundreds that Mark scored for Australia, there's a few I'd just like to touch on. Firstly, the one on debut at the Adelaide Oval in 1991, where he replaced his brother in the side. So it was a bittersweet match, for, I'm sure, for Mark. He made 138 in that game on debut. He came in at four for 104. We were in all sorts of trouble. And Mark, along with Greg Matthews, guided us to safer waters. In South Africa in 1997, probably one of his best hundreds, 116, in the second innings at Port Elizabeth, which guided us to victory in that match and a series win in South Africa in 97. And then I think probably the one that he's most famous for was his 126 at Sabina Park with Stephen, who made 200 that day in 1995, where we wrestled back the Frank Worrell Trophy. In that game at Sabina Park in 1995, Mark was dismissed, caught Adams, bowled Hooper. So bat pad to the part-time offie after he'd seen off Ambrose, Walsh, Bishop, and I can't think, maybe one of the Benjamins, I think, was the fourth bowler. And we were all shocked when he got out. And it was typical Mark War that when the challenge was over, when the job was done, Mark found a way of getting out. A lot of scribes said there was a softness, there was a laziness to his batting. 
Absolute rubbish. Mark got bored. Mark got bored if there wasn't a challenge. And once the challenge was over, he had to find a new challenge. There was no greater example of this when he got 137 at Edg Edgbaston in 1993. Brilliant 100 at Edgbaston. And he was facing a good mate of his, Mark Eilert, who played for Essex for a number of years and Junior knew him well. And Mark was flying him to all parts of the boundary. Well, after he hit another four off Mark Eilert, Graham Gooch, the captain, and Essex captain as well, ran down the pitch and grabbed Mark Eilert and wanted to make a big field change. And he moved Graham Thorpe from square leg to deep backward square leg, five metres in from the rope. Very next ball from Mark Eilert was a half volley outside leg stump. Junior picked it up in classical Mark War fashion, flicking the back leg, throwing the hair back, as he did so well. And Graham Thorpe did not have to move a deep backward square leg, straight down his throat, out. And we were all absolutely shocked. Mark came off the ground and we said, mate, terrific innings, 137. But what about your dismissal? What about Graham Thought down at deep backward square leg? Didn't you see him move? He said, oh, no. No, I saw him go there. And we said, well, what about the shot? It was a half volley outside leg and you picked him out. He said, oh, I wonder if I could get over his head. <laughs> so that's how Mark played the game. The challenge was over for him. He needed something different. At the Gabba, a year, oh, a year or two earlier than that, he faced Phil Tufnell, who was bowling left arm over the wicket to Mark Waugh. As, and Mark hated that. Defensive cricket was not on for Mark Waugh. He was bowling outside his leg stump, spinning him back to his pats. And Mark kicked it away for about five or ten minutes. And after a while, he had enough of that. We were 450 runs in front. So Mark tried a reverse sweep. And this is in 1994, mind you, not 2013 or 14. Tried the reverse sweep off Phil Tufnell. Managed to get it back on his stumps beautifully. Bowled Tufnell for 15. Came off the ground. Bob Simpson, the coach, was fuming. We were all snickering, because it, it was a classic Mark Ward dismissal. When we, Junior sat down, we said, mate, um, what about the reverse sweep? And he said, oh, bloody Tufnell. Boring, offensive bowling outside my leg stump. We said, yeah, well, fair enough, mate, but what about the reverse sweep? When did you try that? He said, I've never tried it. That's the first time I thought I'd pull it out in a test match. <laughs> That's how Mark played. He was, a, he was an entertainer. I think probably the most, uh, the best looking batsman I saw uh, in the time that I played the game and probably still one of the best since. He was up there, right up there with Brian Lara, I think, when it comes to watching a player. In the field, he was brilliant. The best all-round fieldsman I've ever seen. Whether he's fielding on the boundary, mid-wicket, cover, slip, the best I've ever seen. A couple of catches, one off Alex Stewart at Headingley in 93, off Paul Rifles, bowling off the middle of the bat at second slip, brilliant. And Inja Marmol Huck, couldn't believe that he was caught off Shane Warne at uh, Bell Reeve in 1999. Junior, as, we, as I called him, or Middies, was one of his first nicknames when he, when he first came into the New South Wales ranks, because Stephen was four minutes older, so he was Schooners, and Mark was Middies. <laughs> I've heard him called Afghanistan, which I never really liked. Audi I loved. I called him Audi for a while because he got four ducks in a row in Sri Lanka, so it was like four rings. Audi. He didn't like that too much. But Mark Waugh, to me, played the game the right way. He played it because he loved the competition, and as I said, when the competition fell away, so did Mark Waugh, because there wasn't a challenge there for him. But he played to entertain people, and he was a great entertainer. He kept it simple, which is what we all should do when we play the game of cricket, uh, a team meeting I can recall in 97 in England during the Ashes series. We spent about an hour running through the England batsmen and we're getting bogged down a bit. And Mark hadn't said a word. And I turned to Junior and I said, mate, what should we do with Alex Stewart? And he said, Tub, he said, tell the quicks to hit the top of off stump with the occasional bouncer. That works most of the time. And that was Mark's input. We all looked at each other and said, that'll do us. We went and had a beer. Um, so that's how Mark wore played the game. I, I still love listening to his commentary because he keeps it very simple. Um, he, in the sides that I played in, was always one of the first chosen. Terrific guy to play with, a genuine entertainer and a guy who loved the challenge. So to me, it's absolutely my pleasure to stand here today and induct into the Australian Cricket Hall of Fame, Mark Edward War, and here's some of his highlights. Thank you. I mean, Mark Wall was the best. He was probably 
my favourite cricketer of my time of watching, you know, whether he was in the field, whether it slips, he is a legend. Oh, great catch, Mark Moore again. If you could choose one person who you'd just love to sit there on the sofa or at the ground and just watch bat all day, you know, he was just a class, wasn't he? He's made it just over his streak's head. It's so much time, and that's, I guess, is the difference between him and most other batsmen around the world. Beautifully played, that's his strength. Entertainment. Relaxed. No, I was never relaxed in the backyard, mate. We were full on. There was four boys, and it was, you know, each every man for himself, and he survived the best way he could. He knew his game really well when he could pick for Australia. He had to wait. I think he scored 10,000 runs and waited four or five years, so he was ready to play Test cricket. 100 on debut. What a magnificent innings it's been. Typical Mark War. I don't remember much of his debut century because he made batting look so easy. We finished that night, we walked out of the room, so I was behind Alan Border, Mark War, Bob Simpson. I said to him, Junior, you're probably asking, how long's this test cricket been going on? And his first answer was, I should have been picked two years ago. <laughs> and the look on Bob Simpson's face was priceless. After Mark's debut 100 at the Adelaide Oval, the next tour the Australian team had was to the West Indies in 91. And Mark War has become the first Australian ever to hit a test century on this round. That was a pretty proud moment in Trinidad where we actually walked out and played a test match for Australia after all those years in the backyard. So it was a fearsome pace attack. He wasn't afraid to back away at times and hit them over the backward point rather than the slips. I think he averaged over 60 in that series. He was one of those guys, it didn't matter if he was playing a grade game at Bankstown Over or playing a test match at Lords. Mark had played the same. And I remember rooming with him before the Lord's Test match in 93, and I had a sleepless night. I was up and down going to the toilet. He could hear me tossing and turning, and uh, his bed was only a couple of metres away, and he kept saying, for goodness sake, Slats, it's just another game of cricket. He'd almost be asleep waiting to bat, and then all of a sudden there'd be an appeal, and he'd wander out and bat. I get a lot more ducks than any other bats, and I don't know what, well, I know why, because I'm half asleep. He, he'd see the game as something to be absolutely enjoyed, and to have a bit of fun with it. And he, he tried a reverse sweep of Phil Tufnell at the Gabba. Yeah. That's, they tried the reverse sweep. That's not quite the shot to be playing. Came in, looked at the TV, watched it and went, how did that bowl me? I've never practised one of them. I don't know how that bowled me. So I was like, he just couldn't believe he'd missed something like that, but uh, very rare. Well, as a one-day batsman, he, he had all the skills, as everyone knows. He's got the ability to keep the ball along the ground. He can go over the top, he can attack fast men and then spinners. Whenever Australia really needed runs and someone to make a big hundred when we needed it, but I'm sure nearly every time he got a hundred, Australia won. Mark Wall brings up his 18th Test Match 100. Probably his greatest skill as it feels was his intuition and sense that something was about to happen. Catch again, Mark Wall. Gave you a lot of confidence as a bowler. You know, he caught, I think, 99% of the balls that come anywhere near him. He's the best all-round fieldsman in uh, Test cricket at the moment. Probably the biggest moment of our careers against the toughest opposition when it counted the most. I guess there we were, you know, from the backyard of Penania and to batting at Sabina Park against the best attack in the world and you know beating the, probably the best side in the world. So it was, it was a pretty incredible journey. I think if you had to go and sit and pay to watch money, it would be like Mark Wall's batting, you're not leaving a seat. Please welcome Mark Wall. I think I need a few tips off the boys in that reverse sweep. That was an absolute shocker. I'm glad I'm not commentating on myself because I would give myself a, a pay for that one. Um, look, it's, uh, it's a great honour to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. I um, mean, there's so many uh, great legends that have been inducted in front of me. So. Um, it, you know, it gives great satisfaction to be amongst that group. Uh, I'd like to uh, congratulate Belinda Clark too for being inducted into the Hall of Fame, uh, the first woman cricketer, so well done to you, Belinda. Um, there's a few people I need to thank, of course. Um, first of all, I need to thank my coaches. Uh, way back from the junior days, uh, Panania East Tills out in the west of Sydney, so uh, Neil Doughty and Alan Doughty, my coaches then, um, I've got to thank them for 
starting me off, I was pretty ordinary when I started. I think I got a duck in my first game, actually under 10, so it wasn't a great start. So thanks to them. Then, of course, Bankstown District Cricket Club um, in the western suburbs again. Um, Brian Friedman, who was the, the uh, chairman there, and it was a very professional club, so they taught me how to play cricket uh, right from Green Shield through to first grade. Um, you know, that was excellent facilities as well, very professional club, so I've got to thank them. The players I play with, fellow players, they made me look pretty good at times. I must admit, uh, you know, Glenn McGrath, Shane Warne and a lot of the batsmen at the other end. Actually, Tubby, you made me look good um, batting <laughs> with you at the other end. Um, <laughs> and oh, that didn't hurt you either, sleeping. You got to be Australian captain. I got shunted down the line from that, uh, <laughs> from that uh, morning. So, uh, fellow players, so obviously I've got to thank them. And, and last but not least, my family, my mum and dad. Obviously, mum and dad are here tonight. Um, well, Mum put the food on the table. You had to be pretty quick to get in and, and get your share of food with, uh, with three brothers. And Dad, of course, as well, he worked hard. Um, they, they introduced me to, to sport and tennis and cricket and soccer, and their encouragement was, you know, was vital in uh, those early days. Uh, my brothers, of course, uh, Dean and Danny, uh, who were pretty good fieldsmen and, and used to bowl a lot in the backyard. They didn't get much of a hit, that's for sure. So <laughs> I've got to thank them. And Stephen, well, he was pretty tough to get out. He'd bat all day. He'd never walk, even if you got him out, if he nicked one on the into the garage door, he, he would stay there. So um, I've, just, I've been lucky. You know, I played in a great era of Australian cricket. Uh, we won a lot of games uh, through, that, uh, through that period in the 90s and the early 2000s. And guys like Mark Taylor, who captained me, you know, you know, it was a really good time to play cricket. So, and I'd like to congratulate the, t the current team. Uh, tremendous season so far, flogging the Poms, which is always great to see, and a big challenge ahead uh, in South Africa. So once again, thank you uh, for being invited to the Hall of Fame. It's a great honour.